Good. Okay, so we can start our class on protein structure and alpha fold. This thing is gonna take three days, same place, same time, on tomorrow and on uh, on Wednesday, uh, Thursday. As far as who I am, I'm a staff researcher working with between the Matteo Pellegrini and, and, and David Eisenberg's group. I'm working on this floor on the set on, on in this building second floor 205 so if you want to get me try to try to uh, catch me there or send me email i'm email should be should be there it's been like that for like probably 25 years or so i i, I did my phd here with Wayne Haber ages ago when when probably half of the buildings you've seen are were not here so that's part of <clears throat> part of history Otherwise, we're gonna be, uh, it doesn't work. There we go. Hmm? Lucas, can you put it on presentation mode? Because it looks, uh, I'm, there we go. No. Uh, you, yeah, you see the right stuff, correct? No I, no, I don't. I see your notes. Oh, you see my notes? Yeah. And I see, uh, how do I switch it? Share display, not the. Yeah. Uh, Oh, 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 I see. Okay, new share, share, share the screen. Yeah, share the entire screen and then just put on yeah. That's what right. I'm doing. Okay, and then I'm gonna go to presentation. And what do you see? Your notes, but can you change the displays? Uh, swap. Um, how do I do that? Um, Display settings on top. Display settings. Well, no, no, no. Display settings. So uh, here we go. Better. No, because then I see then I see the uh, notes on the on the screen here. All right. I see that looks better on mine, but all right. Yeah, but not 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 for the class. Uh, all right. All right. So let's not do that, and um, because I also can see your emails as well. So um, let's share just the. Uh, the slides. Sorry about this. Okay, I'm gonna stop sharing. Mm. Yeah, what else can we do? Let me try our plot. Oh, 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 we're getting there. Well, power. Let's try. Yes. No. Better. No, it's not better here. Oh, for me it is. No, it's not better here. Okay. Yeah, I get it. You, you, you can see your notes on the whiteboard. But I can see it perfectly on mine. Oh, that's just not too important. Okay. Uh, what if I do? I apologize, everybody. No. Yes. Okay, so now we do have the right stuff on the screen. Okay. Now, there's hope. Let's see if they still do see the right stuff. So now we zoom. Now I can share. And I can share this. Ah, what do you see? It looks good. Ah, got it. All right, great. Yeah, you go ahead and begin. Okay. So, well, I guess I guess you'll have to cut the, the beginning. Okay, so let's let's start. Let's start once more. So this is finally the start of the of the uh, QCP workshop on, on protein structure and uh, alpha fold. My name is Łukasz Sawinski. I'm a staff researcher here working on the second floor of Boyer Hall. You can get me there or or by email. And today's workshop is gonna okay now I it's gonna cover. Huh? Sorry. Uh -huh. Okay. 
Okay, now I'm frozen. Ah, I don't want to edit anything. No. It's still bad. Um, it looks good on my end. Yeah, but not on my end. I can't. I can't do anything. <laughs> Is it your computer? Okay. No, I see different. I see protein structure. Oh, report. Oh, 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 I see. I see what's going on. Okay. Here. Huh? Wait. Ah. Ah, here we go. Okay, we can finally start my poor for drawing this off, but that's, that's fine. Okay, so let's start for the third time. This is a workshop on protein structure with, with alpha fold, and my name is Lukasz Salvinski. I'm a staff researcher here working down on the second floor. And today we will cover the first part of the three-day series. This is gonna be mostly about looking at uh, at protein structures, uh, namely where to find them, how to look at them. And uh, we'll go few, through few few structures using camera and, and look at, at how those structures look like and, and, and why they, they look like. Tomorrow we'll, uh, we'll go over uh, how does it happen that protein falls the way they they look? What what are driving forces and how? Uh, also, how we learn how we determine the structures. Obviously, we've got to somehow know how they they look like. Those things are not coming from from the thin air. And then then between tomorrow and 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 last day, we'll cover uh, how do we pre predict protein structures? How this thing is done and how to interpret predictions you can find. Uh, generated by AlphaFold. This is the currently most most fashionable uh, program used for uh, for predicting protein uh, protein structures. So that's that's what's gonna happen in the next two days. Today we're gonna go over we're gonna go over protein structures and first why uh, why do we care? Well, I mean, uh, typically we're getting we're getting a. a sequence of a, of a genome and then we're getting a bunch of genes with a bunch of ATGCs and, and so forth and most of those <clears throat> genes are, are there because they can produce uh, proteins. The sequence of the gene is translated into, uh, is, is transcribed into mRNA and then mRNA sequence translated into, into protein. Protein is a polypeptide made out of a bunch of amino acids and they fold into some uh, at least most of them fold into uh, some uh, discrete shape, which determines what what the proteins can uh, can do. And typically, this thing is happening by interacting with with, with something. Right? If, <clears throat> if if you've got a molecule that does nothing, that doesn't interact with the surrounding, then then it's it's, it's pretty boring. I mean, those are noble bases, right? They, You've got you've got a bunch of gases starting with helium. That that yes, they are there, but uh, they doesn't doesn't do much. You start doing things when you interact with with your neighbors, and that's 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 uh, that's what's happening with proteins. And they can interact with small molecules, and this is entire huge groups of enzymes. Each each enzyme is going to bind. A substrate or a couple of substrates and then do something to them and then release the products. So this is case where we're interacting with small molecule and modifying them. It could be <clears throat> it could be that you just let the small me molecule across the protein across the cell membrane, right? And that's that's what channels do. They depending on conditions let let's say potassium or, or sodium ions through the uh, cell membrane. So that's <clears throat> that's another class of proteins that do something. Uh, in case of channels, those small molecules go across uh, across the, the concentration gradient. 
they go from the side where there's more sodium ions into side that's less that there's less sodium ion but you do have you do have proteins that actually act, actually actively push the small molecules across the membrane those are uh, transporters that are gonna uh, get let's say glucose into the cell and this is this is done by by the same time binding ATP and and changing shape and pushing pushing the, the small molecule across the membrane. Sometimes there's another group of, of proteins where they bind the molecule, they don't do anything to it, they don't move it, they just change shape, and this acts as a receptor. You've got the protein that's sitting there waiting for a small molecule to bind. When the small molecule binds, then it changes shape and then it makes it uh, interact with something else and there's an entire chain of events which leads to, uh, leads to, to some sort of a signal generating a, generating a response. And here we're going into, uh, into the other, other type of interactions where instead of interacting with just a small molecule, you're interacting You've got interactions between two proteins. You've got a protein that, let's say, binds a small molecule, changes shape, then it makes it compatible with to interaction with another protein, and and, and so forth. So, so there's an entire class of interactions between uh, between the proteins. Uh, in case of in case of uh, the signaling cascades, those inter interactions are transient. You, they sometimes they happen, sometimes sometimes they don't. The, the interactions are turned off and, and on by ligand. You can have you can have interactions between protein molecules that are permanent, that are more or less existing throughout the entire lifetime of the molecule. You might have enzymes that are comp composed of multiple subunits. Each one is a separate protein molecule. They come together and stay that for entire uh, lifetime of the, of the enzyme. This is the same case for hemoglobin, where you've got the four chains coming together, and the functional subunit of hemoglobin is actually tetramer, four chains of uh, interacting together, and then the in concert bind, bind oxygen uh, molecules. So here's here's uh, another example of, of interaction that's, that, that's, that's uh, permanent, but you also can have a situation, as mentioned, where you've got protein-protein uh, interactions that are transient. This could be because uh, they participate in, in, in signaling cascades where you've got interactions present only in, if, if one of the proteins is, is, is pushed into a state which, which allows it to, to interact with others. So, so interactions can be either permanent or, 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 or transient. And then uh, it's not only protein-protein interactions. You do have a lot of interactions between proteins and, and nucleic acids. I mean, all the all the machinery which uh, allows cells to actually duplicate the uh, DNA and then uh, translate into into RNA and then uh, and, and transcribe into RNA and then translate into uh, into polypeptide chain. All of that is built out of out of proteins interacting every now and then with, with, with nucleic acids. So, so interactions are not limited to only protein, protein or protein small molecules. You've got, you've got other, other types of molecules, other types of, 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 of polymers interacting with, with proteins. So it's, it, it, it's pretty, pretty diverse. There are, uh, there's a lot of things there and, and, and uh, you do have people spending time just investigating one interaction of of a of, of, of couple of proteins for entire uh, academic career, it's, it, it, it might happen. It's, this is very, very, very complicated and, and, and a broad field. But everything is based on, on, on uh, proteins that do have uh, are molecules of defined shape that, that allows them to do something. Now, where do we find those structures? With uh, structural biology, uh, it's actually a pretty lucky uh, situation in a sense that very early on, somewhere in the, in the late 60s, early 70s, there was probably, at that, that time, probably half a dozen or so protein structures known. And the community of, of, of uh, people who are dealing with structural protein structures, those are 
the program crystallographers, they uh, agreed upon creating a resource called PDB. This was originally in Brookhaven, where they deposited uh, structures. This was uh, this happened somewhere, somewhere the uh, summer in the, in the early seventies. There was first this repository created in, in, in Brookhaven National Labs. And then the International Union of uh, Crystallography uh, deemed that, that if you publish a structure, you should deposit, actually you must deposit in, a, uh, in PDB. This was, this was decided somewhere in the, in the early 90s. And this was both a policy that that you do have to deposit deposit the structure. So so if you don't deposit, you can't publish. So this pushed all the all the researchers to actually make the data available. And they also specified where it should go and what is the format of the data. So so this way, uh, the data the the information that's describing protein structures is is pretty uniform in terms of format and can be found in a. Uh, in one place, uh, so that's that's uh, that's what happened in 1990s, and since then, starting from from the initial PDB, which was once more a handful of structures, now we've got uh, hundreds of thousands of structures deposited there, and, and this is uh, free for everybody. Uh, the format is pretty pretty uniform. It's, it's, uh, this is the, the so-called PDP format. It's essentially listing, uh, listing uh, atoms in the structure and where in space they are. So this is essential list of atom coordinates. You see the, the XYZ, uh, XYZ coordinates for, for atom number one, which happens to be uh, N, which specifies that this is a nitrogen. This is a part of a valine, uh, valine, valine residue of a chain A, and then the residue is numbered. So, so this is essentially how the data uh, looks like. The problem is that this is not, not, not human readable, so you need actually programs to, to look at those structures in a, uh, in a graphical format, but data is, data is there. And a lot of people who do uh, computational structural biology actually read those files with scripts and then transform them into various computations there. But for, for human consumption, you need programs to, to look at them in a, on, on, on the screen. As I said, all of that is accessible through uh, a resource called uh, Worldwide PDB. Since 1990s, there are actually three institutions that, that provide access to the structural data. Mm -hmm. They are collaborating within a consortium called, called, called uh, Worldwide PDB, but those are actually uh, three distinct institutions. One is uh, descendant of, of, of original PDB from Brookhaven, somewhere in the, I think, late 90s or so, in Brookhaven got replaced by a consortium of UCSD, Rutgers, and I think it was the third one, I don't remember. There are three institutions in the US who are running our CSB. That's, that's the, the uh, version that's, that's here. And, and here you've got the, the URL for this thing, www.rcsb.org. There is a European version, which is called uh, PDBE. This is PDBE Europe. This one is run at Kingston. This is uh, next, to, next, to, next to Cambridge. This, and next to Sanger Institute where human genome was sequenced. So this is, this is equivalent of an CBI equivalent of, this is the, 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 the main, main European resource for, for protein, for, for bioinformatics in general. And, and in this, this case for, for, for structural biology, for, for, for repository of, of structures. And then there's also uh, PDBJ in, in Japan, which I don't know much, much about it, I'm either, either using our CSB or, or PDB. Those three sites are distinct in a sense that they are run in different places. They provide slightly different services. So as 
I mentioned here uh, at at uh, RCSB, there's uh, there's a lot of educational resources. The SPDB one one hundred and one is, is a series of of vignettes of, of describing different structures and nice stories to to read through. Uh, they provide certain certain types of of searches not available on other sites. PDBE do provide. Uh, services like this PDB uh, PISA, they, they, they try to present you not with isolated chains, but they try to tell you which, how, how they come up, come together in a, in a, in a, in a uh, biologically meaningful uh, subunit. So, so there are, there are different, different services provided by PDB and probably PDBJ provides, provides something else, but I'm not familiar with, with that. All three resources share the same core data, same same uh, files with the with the data. So you're you're getting exactly the same uh, information, just just different view of the same uh, same things. Both all, all those three resources are uh, originated from the uh, crystallography side, so they are skewed in a way towards uh, presenting uh, data as uh, submitted by, by crystallographers. And nowadays, there are two other sources of experimental information on uh, uh, protein structure. This is NMR and, uh, and cryo-EM. And uh, oh, here's, here's a list of what, what, what all those three uh, sites provide. So this is one thing is they do provide infrastructure for submitting data. So if you determine a new structure, then you do have to submit it uh, to PDB. And those, those sites provide tools to actually help you with that. There's an extensive, extensive part of, of, of submission process is, is validation of the data. So we're not gonna uh, be able to, to, to uh, submit something which is obviously wrong. Something. Sometimes things happen, but but uh, it's 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 initially screened during uh, submission. There's some type of, of, of data search available. You can search for for a protein you're interested in, or 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 for the researcher uh, who's a deposit data, or or some type of features of the of the structure. So there's there are different search uh, services provided by different sites, and then as I said. Uh, some specific things are like this uh, PISA, which stands for proteins, interfaces, structures, assembles, assemblies. This, this is uh, a way to uh, help uh, researchers identify what are the relatively relevant units in a, in a, in a, uh, identified in a, in a data. Okay, and then, uh, then besides those, those three sites, as I said, there's another one which collects data uh, generated by uh, NMR uh, and another one that that is used as a repository for the data generated or uh, provided by by cryoEM all those sites uh, provide service that's that's actually required during the application process to publish your structural data you do have you do have deposit data in in, in there it's one one issue is that this way uh, third parties can validate if if, uh, if your structures are correct, and then if then uh, you've got uh, general public able to get to the data, analyze this thing, so so you, you do have a huge pool of of, of structures. And this is how Alpha was 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 possible. They did have a huge set of of structures that they can use to train train their uh, their predictions on. They were not proprietary; they were publicly available. Now, there's still a problem with, with looking at the data because data looks literally like this. This is, if this is as once more a snippet of a PDB format, it's pretty old. It, it originates back, back in, in late 60s, I think, or early, early 70s. Uh, at that time, computers were uh, sort of ancient and used strange things for data input, namely those punch cards that go back to, I think, 19th century. Those things had limited number of characters that were able to fit in a, on a card. So, so the PDB format has restrictions imposed of that. There's only 80 or so characters wide 
in the format. So, so there's not enough space, for example, to have a large number of molecules of, of atoms numbered. So the largest number of atoms you can report in a single PDB file is, I think, 9,099, 9 which is a problem nowadays. You've got a huge complex is determined by cryo -EM, where you've got tens of thousands of atoms present in the model. So, so because of that, PDB is uh, nowadays replaced by a new format called MMCF. This one is, is relatively recent and uh, flexible enough so you can uh, Report, report nearly nearly anything you can think about in, a, in in this format, and it's extensible, so you can modify it. But uh, irrespective of the format, you want to see actually the, the structure, not the column of numbers. And to do that, there are programs that are either based on on a web browser. So nowadays, you can go uh, you can go to PDB uh, website to our CSB and and look at the structure. Uh, on the screen, this thing is 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 is, is interactive. So you can rotate this molecule, change the colors, and so forth. This works. All, all all this thing works within the browser. So you can go to our CSB, find the record, and and look at those things and and, and poke around. There is equivalent. Uh, oh, and apart from the structure, you can you can obviously see the uh, see the sequence of the of the protein somewhere there. So then you can you can look at at individual residues and, and so forth. Signals and functionalities are provided by all those three sites. So so this is our CSB. There's something that looks very similar on the on the PDB E site. It is once more the same thing. Plus there are standalone online browsers where you can you can go to, to one of those one of those three sites and, and each of them allows you to load the load the data directly from PDB or from a file you have downloaded on your PC and then and then look at those things and then so forth. Those things are good if you're if you're uh, occasionally looking at the structures and and uh, are curious about one or two features. Similarity, uh, functionality is very similar. They allow you to, to show the molecules in different uh, different ways, either as, as a cartoons, as you see here, or you might be able to see individual atoms in different styles, different colors. You might uh, you might export the image into your uh, as, as, as a graphics file. You can animate things and, and so forth. But uh, those are those are things things that are built into your browser. There is also an entire set of programs that are actually running directly on your on your on, on your computer. The one that's most often used by crystallographers, this one goes back probably to to oh early, early 2000s probably maybe earlier. It's it's called Kroot. It's, I think, third in the line of, 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 of uh, programs used by, by crystallographers. The original one was called Frodo. It was somewhere from the 80s, I think. It was replaced by O, and then then could took over. The first two didn't run on PCs. This is one of the one of the limitations of the early systems that that that, that PCs, as you know them, Windows and, and, and Macs didn't didn't run the, the, the earlier programs. Uh, not to mention that at that time, uh, th those programs precede the, uh, the Windows, as you know, and, and, and personal computers. But uh, nowadays, the, the common uh, program used by crystallographers is 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 good. This is this is. This is one of the, this is you, how, how molecules look there. The mesh you see this green and, 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 and the blue blobs is, is actually shape of the molecule as determined by, by exophysography. This is where, where the electrons are located within uh, space. This is, uh, this is the shape of the molecule. And then you've got in, the, in yellow the drawn in model of the, of the, of the protein. Mm -hmm. More? Uh, is it better or not? Oh, or is it? Okay. 
which, which microphone I'm running from. Thing is, I'm gonna mess up something and we're gonna get back into the same trouble. No. Okay, it, I think it works now. Okay, it should be. It should be. Okay, so I've got to go back to share screen share. Then I go back to Okay, and what do I share? I shared the wrong thing. Don't share the right thing, so we're back. back. Now I'm sharing the right thing. Can you hear now? That's the loudest I can make it. Okay. Uh, well, so that's that's the uh, that's how it was looking in code, and this is this is geared towards uh, towards photographers there's another program called 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 vmd here's a screenshot from for vmd vmd starts for virtual molecular dynamics so as the name implies this is geared towards people simulating the motions of the uh, of the molecules and and uh, that's 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 a program that, that those people use with functionalities meant for for rendering the, the trajectories movies of, 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 of molecules moving uh, as they change over over time. So so that's that's VMD and this is this is geared towards one 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 specific uh, type of audience. The program that's geared towards general public in a sense uh, towards people who are interested just in viewing molecules and displaying them and, and uh, generating uh, towards generate Generating, generating illustrations as Pymo. This one was probably responsible for, for the vast majority of, of figures that you've seen in scientific publications with this protein structure or DNA structures in, until maybe five years ago. Since then it was overtaken by over it was overtaken by by uh, Chimera X or Chimera and Chimera X. One of the reasons is that the PIMO is commercial, so to get it used for uh, your research, you've got to formally buy a buy a license every year. It's not much, but it's 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 uh, discouraging people from from using it. And there is a functional replacement, namely Camera X, which is free for for research and private use with no no uh, strings attached. Functionalities are very very similar. And uh, actually, Chimera X is even taking over in sense of uh, ease of use and 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 being able to uh, work with with cryo EM, da EM data. So, with with recent explosion of cryo EM, Chimera X is taking taking over essentially, and that's that's what we will be we will be using. The website where you can find that is listed on the on the web page, and if you go there, if you look for UCSF Chimera X in Google, so it should pop up there. And if you haven't installed it yet, then if you can go to the download page, then then you should be able to see a, a window like this, page like this, or equivalent. It should find out what's your operating system. And then if you if you download the most recent version, I, I think is 1.7.1, if I'm correct. 
So if you can try to to install it, then 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 we can go on. In the meantime, we'll make a break. Just let me stop this thing for a moment. Let's see. I'll record. Let's continue after after break. Okay, but there's not much to share after the break. Oh no, there is. Oh. Uh, do because oh we I ate this no that's not we're not gonna do it we're gonna we're gonna stop sharing things we're gonna go directly to camera okay no There now the entire screen. Now, okay, so let's let's share entire screen and let's go and start camera. If you if you install camera, you should see this thing somewhere somewhere on your laptop. It takes a while to to start, but here's the camera command. go. So being a complicated program, so it takes a while, it takes a while to, to have it started. But here it is. Zoom is getting in my way, but okay. Okay. So this is this is how Chimera looks like when you start it after you've been using using it for various things. It's gonna remember the past things that we looked at, but for our purposes, we can just go to file. Um, you're still like on a certain uh, Oh, oh, I'm still sharing the wrong thing. Um, you share, I want to share this thing and then share, no. Control. No, I don't want to. Okay, I'm gonna, gonna stop sharing in this way and then I'm gonna go share. And I'm gonna share one. Uh, oh. Why? Why is it doing to me? Oh no! Oh oh oh! I know what it is. This is different. Thing. This is not sharing. I'm sharing fine. This is whatever is showing up there. Oh, this is not problem with Zoom. Uh, oh, so I've got to get PowerPoint, and I want to. to get out that's fine oh here we go good that's better and then i'm sharing ah here that's that's a good i don't want to powerpoint okay okay so i think now you see the right thing oh good get rid of this junk. Okay, here we go. So, uh, if camera was used for a while, then you're gonna see a lot of a lot of breadcrumbs, a lot, lot of stuff that was uh, open there before. But uh, if you want to open something new, we can go to File, 
and we can go to fetch by ID. And there's a lot of databases that do store and provide information about the structures. One of them is, is PDB. And I did myself a list of, of interesting things that should exist in a, in a, in a PowerPoint in a presentation. But here, I'm going to use something called one TIM. The PDB records, the PDB structures are identified by four letter codes. There are typically a number and three either letters or, 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 or letters interspersed with, with, with numbers. In this case, uh, our code is one TIM. And if we fetch it, I'm getting PDB, not MMR, I want PDB and I want to get one TIM. Okay, and if I fetch it, after a moment, I should see something like this. This is this is a graphic representation of, of the molecule that was deposited under the uh, one TIM code. Okay. And this is so-called cartoon representation. You see uh, fragments of the molecule shown as a, as a, as a as sort of a ribbons and some as as uh, some as, uh, as, 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 as as tubes. We can check the way, change the way, change the way they are shown by selecting things from the menu here. If we go to molecule display here, then we can decide if we want to see individual atoms, if we want to see uh, cartoon representation and we want to see a surface of the of the molecule at this moment we do not show atoms we are we atoms are not not shown that's the current setting we are showing though the cartoon nothing happened here if i choose hide it's gonna go away so this is the way to turn on and off uh, cartoon representation if we want to see atoms, we can either show them on top of our, our cartoon representation or turn the, the cartoon off. And now we've got a lot of atoms here. This is one way of showing the atoms. This is shown by, by uh, using the stick style. To zoom in, you can pinch, you can, uh, okay, so how to navigate? The first thing is first, if you want to rotate, you press the left button and, and move things around. And this is gonna rotate things. If you want to uh, rotate in around the axis perpendicular to the screen, uh, you've got to go to the edge of the display and drag down, this is gonna, move things around around the axis pointing out of the screen. If you and this is with, with the left the left button pressed. If you if you drag around your mouse or left button left button button pressed every, anywhere else you're gonna rotate in a, in a in a different way. Now if you want to zoom you uh, on that on the pad you you press you do two finger and go up and down. That's how you zoom in. And then to move things sideways, you press the right button and then you drag mouse and it's gonna move left, left, right, up, down. So that's 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 navigation. Initially it's clunky, but but with with, with time it's 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 gonna get better. It's the only way to to, to learn this thing is, is by by practicing, I am sort of clunky, but I don't use the, 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 the scratch pad, I'm using touch pad, I'm using, I'm using the trackball, so, so it's slightly different, but in this case, it's, it's once more. The left button and drag rotates things. If you want to rotate 
around the axis perpendicular to the screen, you've got to go up and down with left, left button pressed on the edge of the display and to zoom in it's right button uh, it's to zoom in it's it's two fingers and then going up goes bigger down goes down to move things sideways you go press you press left button and drag things around if you want to zoom in on a particular check what particular atom is you can over over, it's gonna tell you what's the name of this thing. We're gonna go over what this thing just in a moment. And if you center on this thing, uh, let's see. center doesn't work. So, uh, so if you want to get the name, you can hover over, it's gonna tell you what this thing is. Okay, now, so this is how to, look at things from different sides, how to drag things around. Now, at this moment, what, you, what we see is we've got the coloring that uh, help you identify atoms. The red atoms are oxygens, blue atoms are nitrogens, the cream color are at this moment carbons, and every now and then, here's a yellow, which which shows you where the where the sulfur is. This is here sulfur. Here, here's another one. Here's another one. Okay. Now, at this moment, it's hard to tell it's if it's a single single chain or or, or more chains because everything looks like the same. But we can choose for coloring. We can color by chain, and then then we notice that those are actually two protein molecules. There's one continuous series of, of amino acids uh, making the chain in pink, and then there are one, another one uh, shown, in, shown in, in blue. We did lose the coloring by, by uh, heteroatoms, by non-carbon atoms, but we can get, get the coloring back by clicking on heteroatom. And now, now we're getting back back the information we can we can find out what what the uh, we can see what the atoms what the atoms are yeah. so and uh, if we can't we can always hover over over a given atom and then there should be a tooltip showing up what we do see here is slash b this is the name of the chain that we're hovering over. The next is ASP. This is the type of the residue. In this case, it's aspartate. Okay, and then we've got the position along the chain. This is 132. This is 132nd residue in a, in a chain. And finally, we've got the atom type. The first letter always uh, denotes the always denotes the uh, element. So, oh, it's gonna be oxygen, and then you're gonna have A, B, C, D, O, A, O, B, O, C. Uh, those are going to be different different oxygens within within the same uh, same residue, and and those uh, this is consistent consistent every every. Every residue have, has its own pattern of, 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 of atom names, so it's, it's it's reproducible, and you can tell which 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 atom it is within the residue. So so that's that's how you see the uh, you can you can find out what the what the given uh, what the given what the given atom atom is. Okay, now let's let's zoom back. Now. Uh, here I went and got the molecule by going to file and fetch by ID, and I did get PDB to read. Okay, this is what is stored in the individual record in a in a, in a database. Those records might correspond to whatever is actually biologically relevant combination of chains, but it's not always the case. It could be that that whatever you see in PDB is 
is what's retrieved, what's, what's uh, reported by crystallographers, and they might report different combination of chains as a as a as a as an initial record. So, if we want to get what uh, what is deemed to be actually biologically relevant molecule, we can go and first close our session so we can get rid of of those two chains. Okay, and then we can repeat the exercise, but we can go to fetch by ID. But now we're gonna do PDB bio units. And then if we go one him, we might see the same thing, but we might see a single chain. Okay, here, here apparently uh, the database, People running the database decided that this is this is biological subunit. So this thing probably exists in a, in nature as a, as a dimer. In a solution, when you look at this protein, it's gonna be combination of two chains. We can check three D two chains once more. We color by chain, and that's what they deem is 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 biologically relevant uh, relevant uh, unit. This particular molecule is an enzyme. This is an enzyme that, that is part of the uh, glycolysis, I think, somewhere in, a, in, a, in a Biochem 101. And uh, it's actually a representative of an entire class of, 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 of proteins that look like this. There's a lot of proteins that have very similar, uh, similar shape. The only thing they differ is the active side where you've got different combination of, of residues that catalyze different reactions. So there's there are entire uh, series of, of enzymes, each with a very similar structure, but they catalyze different reaction because the product active side is, is, is different. As you see, some of the motifs, some of the shapes within the molecules repeat themselves. You see a lot of twisty things. Those are so-called alpha helices. And you do have another series of uh, things that look more like uh, straight, straight chains. Those are beta sheets. And those are two most common, common things you're gonna see within uh, within protein molecules, we can we can go to some other other molecule. Just we can close this one, and we can let's close the session here, and then file, and then open another one. Now I'm gonna go from bio uni, but now I'm gonna get I'm gonna get a code which I have here, which is five. Uh, RSA, I think, if I'm not mistaken. And if I fetch this one, okay, here's a protein. This protein is apparently smaller. There's a less, less, less uh, smaller molecule is, is shorter. And here we've got only single chain. They can also notice that before we had, uh, before, before we had uh, quite a few quite long alpha helices here we've got only only three and then then we've got we've, we've got a uh, few beta sheets over there and this is an enzyme so in this particular case default view shows you shows you actually the active site this is a uh, ribonuclease this is a this is an enzyme that that they just uh, RNA and there's no RNA bound to it, but there's an atom here. If you hover over it, is a phosphate. That's right. It's a phosphorus atom in the center and four oxygens around. So this is P P4 group. This is reminiscent of a part of, of, of RNA. There are phosphates in the RNA molecules. So so this is this is something which probably when enzyme is working is. Uh, Corresponding to the site where, where where this enzyme binds the phosphate group, when when it's catalyzing the, the hydrolysis of of the of the uh, RNA backbone. So so here's a hint where 
where uh, what action might happen and what might be residues that are actually playing a role in, uh, in, in catalysis. So this is one of the useful uh, features of uh, useful things about structures. Is once you look at the structure, then you might figure out how the how the protein works and and which residues are important and and what would happen if you mutate one of them. So so if you got information about structure of a protein, you can infer a lot of information about how. Uh, how it works and then what would happen if you have certain mutations encounter why why mutation is 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 is, is deleterious and, and so forth. So so here's here's another small 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 protein and once more we can rotate it around we can we can color the color change the color of the chain we can we can turn off the heteroatoms we can hide cartoons and show so all the atoms here, we do see one more atom type, namely we see those white oxygens, uh, white uh, hydrogens showing up here. They quite often are omitted from the structures. This is because uh, in X-ray crystallography, you actually do not see hydrogens. The hydrogens are very small. So a lot of structures determined by but X-ray crystallography is missing oxygens. On the other hand, it will show a lot of water molecules. This is when, when I first time looked at the protein structures, I was surprised that uh, apart from the protein, as you, you would expect to see in a, in a, in a, in a, in a structure, of, uh, structure of, of, of the protein, you're going to see all those all those water molecules somewhere here. If you look here, you've got the water molecule, water molecule, water molecule, water. All those these are, are water molecules surrounding the protein. Mm -hmm. Yes, there is. There is. But uh, once more, it's 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 something that's most striking. Striking when you look at the protein structure that's mined by X-ray crystallography, you're gonna see waters. To get rid of them. We can go is as far as I can tell. We can go to, we can go to. to let's see, get in here. I think it's tools, and then find structure and structure editing. You can go to. So this is tools, structure editing. And you can, I think, there should be something there. Let's see. Hydrogen. No. If it's not in the menu, it's probably hiding somewhere there. I don't use it too often. But what you can do is you can go to command line. At the very bottom, there's a command line. And you can, I think you can do hide uh, HOH, maybe. No. Or then. If nothing helps, there's always option maybe you go to you go to Kai the water. How do I remove water? This is, well, there should be something from Chimera. Yeah, you go to Chimera users guide. Uh, here's another one. Let's go to Chimera now. X. Chimera X. Let's go to Chimera X. Okay, user guide. Okay, and then you do have full full documentation here, and there's gonna be documentation index, and then there should be 
Yes, I'm looking for commands. Okay, here. So that's what I was looking for. There's a set of things you can go do from menus. There's a set of things you can do from command line. Yeah, One of them, it should be delete. If I find it here. Okay. And then, uh, then you've got a bunch of bunch of options here. And then you can go under spec and then there should be there should be yeah so here's this is how waters are called h o a h so then this should, this should work well, let's hover over one one of those things. That's how oh, I see why. Okay, there's no age of ages here. This thing is DOD. This is Deltrate water. So so it's delete DOD is gonna work. Huh? DOD. Here we go. No. So uh, it, but it should work. Or so, well, solvent will work. Yeah, so this will work. I agree, but there should be a way to delete delete molecule type. So it should. Be, let's see. And it and it. Find close session. That should be that okay, and we should be able to delete delete. We should be able to delete the OD. I prefer show. I want to show delete. Uh, I should be able to delete all the aspartates. If I want to, so I should be able to delete those. No, okay, let's show. Let's show atoms. What am I? Oh, I can go. Uh, that's no, oh, it's got to work. Oh, well, maybe that's what I need. Delete. Ah, that's it. Okay. Okay, that's that's better. So you've got to specify, okay, so you've got to specify column and the name of the of the of the uh, of the of, of, of the monomer. Okay, so so uh, that's no word is this. Yeah, okay. Uh, good. So here's 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 the second second case of a of a molecule. Okay, let's hide it. And uh, here's here's another enzyme essentially. And it's if we hide the uh, if we hide the side chains. Yeah, hide this hide the, hide the side chain. So this is this is partially alpha, partially partially beta. Beta sheets if we go and close this session and get another molecule open, another one. So 
here. There's another one, seven A C N. We can fetch this one. And here is a protein that's much, much bigger. Is it a single chain or or, or uh, more chains combines? We can always color by chain, and this is way, way, uh, way bigger molecule. There's something additional there besides the besides the uh, the polypeptide chain. We've got here something something which is iron uh, sulfur cluster. We can color this thing by heteroatoms. And now we do have a non, non polypeptide chain of, a, uh, of an enzyme. This is a cluster of sulfur atoms and, and, and iron. And those are uh, often encountered in redox, uh, in enzymes catalyzed in redox, uh, redox reactions. And then there's a small molecule here if we hover over, it's gonna tell you that this is something called uh, ICT with isocitrate, as far as I can tell, which is which is which is substrate, uh, presumably of this enzyme. That's that's got stuck there. Uh, the name is ICT. So. Following the, the case of the water, we want to get rid of it. We can we can delete, but we got to delete colon ICT, and I think it will it will go away. Here we go. So so we can remove molecules by name, but we've got to prefix it with a with a with a colon. Now in this particular case, we do not have hydrogens. But we can always add them. There's an option option to add them, but well, we don't know you've got hydrogen. We've got first to show the side chains. Okay, we can show the side chains, and now we do see a lot of waters here. Here, here's another one. Is it water or or, or deuterium? No, this is water, so we can get rid of waters once more. Colon H O H and waters are gone, we can build hydrogens in if we care. We go to tool and then we go to structure editing and we can add hydrogens. And we've got to specify which, which molecule we care about and that's the one so we can do, okay. Take a while, but here we've got them. If you're an MR spectros spectroscopist, you probably care because that's that's the most common atoms you see there. But if you're a crystallographer, you tend to skip them. So there's a there's a preference. If we want to get rid of them, we can remove them either from the from the menu or we can check that that those are uh, just referred to by H something. So we can delete, delete, we want to do it, we want to delete H and then some of them should go away. But and here, here they are going. So we removed all the, all the all the hydrogens apparently so so we can delete delete individual atoms we can remove uh, remove molecules so so uh, camera allows you to to edit whatever what you're looking whatever you're looking looking at uh, there are different ways of coloring things so far we just colored uh, Molecules by chain, we can we can use different styles of coloring. The rainbow is useful when you want to see where the protein starts and where the protein ends. By convention, the start is on N terminals. It starts with nitrogen, which is bluish. So the N terminal end is gonna be colored by it's gonna start start in blue somewhere somewhere here. Here's the fourth residue lies in four. If we care what's the strap, what's the sequence of the 
of the uh, molecule, we can display it somewhere here. We can go to actually to sorry, sequence and we can go to show sequence viewer. So, and here we've got the we've got the sequence of the pre-protein listed in the, in the in the panel here. So then, if we want to find residue number two, we can we should be able to. No, we can't select it here. Too bad. Oh no, we can we can highlight a few residues one or a few and then then if you look carefully we do see this selection uh, highlighted uh, highlighted there, there's an outline of of the positive the residue number two so so this way we can if we are interested in a given given residue in a chain we can find it uh, in a sequence the way to go there is once more we go to tools sequence show sequence viewer it's gonna open your panel down down here <clears throat> and then and then you can find the rest you're, you're interested interested in uh, if we do have a residue selected we can we can uh, apply the operations i think on the selection so let's see if we if we color color this thing by chain. You see the, the operation applied only to a selection. So this is one clunky way of, of selecting a given residue and, and, and changing the way it's displayed. For example, so here I change the color of the residue by selecting it somewhere in the list and then then, then selecting, uh, selecting operation from the menu. We can do it from the command line. So we can, uh, we can say that we want, for example, uh, we can uh, uh, we can select we can select uh, residues. Let's say from any chain. I think it's gonna be one to ten. Yeah. Now, now we can select, let's see, one, two, three. Confused. What's the syntax? Select. Uh, well, we can well we can select first we can select the entire chain so this is gonna be slash and chain name should select everything okay and then and then then once we've got something selected we can we can well we can or we can uh, then we can color cell this stands for selection I think red. Yeah, so this way uh, we can select, we can color entire selection by referring to to this thing in a in a command command or command line operation. So color is gonna color things, uh, color things. Then we're gonna uh, use our current selection. This is cell, and then we can do let's say color it. Uh, let's make it blue. Yeah, blue. Uh, blue. Okay. Oh, blue. Okay, there's an entire set of different colors. If you want to see what's available, you can do color and list. Okay, and then up here, you're gonna see in a panel a list of, of, of available colors. So that's, you can use any, any of those names for coloring now. Yeah. So, so far, I just use the, the current selection, the, the whatever is highlighted in the, uh, sub, whatever is marked in green. We can get rid of uh, 
Selectioner. Select. Little selectioner. Selectioner. Select. Undo. Select. Clear. We can clear selection and then we've got nothing selected. Now, how to select individual things? Well, I did try select. And slash and chain identifier. This I'll oh, select. Chain identifier. This selects entire chain. And then we can go to select clear. We can do select. If we want to select a residue of particular type, we can specify that we want a colon and a name either of a residue type of, or, 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 or water or HOH or DOD or, 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 or small molecule, and then we're going to select those. Right, and as before, if we want to color all the alanines, all the alanines, uh, one particular color, we can first select them and then do color, uh, color uh, cell. This stands for current selection and make it, uh, for example. And now all the alanines are are marked, marked, marked green. Now. If we get rid of selection, we can clear. And then let's try to select something in a, in a, in a more useful way. So now select, select colon. Uh, let's try one, two, three. Or the range is not working well. Help to, to here we can check and specify things of uh, residue at atom name. How do we, oh, that's how we go. So we can either specify, we can either specify Alanine. Or we can specify colon one to let's say twenty, and this way we're specifying the range of residues. Since instead of selecting all the alanines as before, now we've selected entire range of uh, range of residues. If we want to, and it can be either a range or it can be residue one to. Five, six, and this is also gonna work. Except, yeah. So now, now we do have discrete residues picked up. Yeah, one here, one here. So we've got one, two, and fifty-six selected. So you can, and you can mix, mix and match ranges and individual things selected, separated by column. So, so this way you can select separate residues and then. You can also specify, I think, atom types. So let's try to show show things with uh, atoms. Okay, we do have atoms, and now let's try to select, for example, uh, for example, residues one to ten or one one. One to ten, and we want to select only only carbons. Let's see if it works. Yeah. So this this way we do picked up not carbon. We picked up all the atoms that are named C. If you want 
see with, with one or more characters, I think we can add question mark. And now we are adding, adding uh, all the atoms that are named C with, with one extra character. I think if we use star, you might be able to get all the carbons. Yeah. So, so that's, that's what's, what's, what's happened. Hmm? Oh, this is at, at. So if you, so uh, colon and number dash number comma number is gonna get you, is gonna get your residue range. Uh, and if you follow it by at and the character corresponding or series of characters corresponding to the atom names, you're gonna be able to specify atoms within within this range. What's next to the C? Is that star? Oh, this is star, yeah. This is star. And then wild card is either either question mark with one. I think it's standard, standard, standard wild cards. Uh, question mark stands for one. Uh, star should stand for, for any any number, I think. So and then if you want to uh, select C's and C's with one one extra thing, then you can combine it, combine it this way, or uh, you can combine it. Uh, this way, so that's 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 how uh, how you you can select things. Uh, so uh, and then what is in front of it is a chain a chain uh, identifier with uh, pre preceded by by letter by by backslash by, by slash. So this way, if you've got slash a colon one to ten, it means first to 10th residue in a, uh, in a chain A, and we care only about carbon atoms that start with, uh, with names starting with C or C star, or, or, or uh, that start either C or, or C with something that follows. So, so this is pretty flexible. It allows you to pick up, pick up different, different things. And uh, so, so that's, that's, uh, that's, that's how you're selecting things. It, if you can also combine selections, if you check the, the section of the, on, on the selections in user guides, gonna tell you how to combine those things and, and, and make more, more complex selections in one, uh, in one shot. So, so that's how you can select things. And that's all for this molecule. So let's, 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 uh, Close it and let's open one more. Let's get and open another one. So to show you, to demonstrate your difference between the raw PDB and the, the bio unit, let's get let's get one HHO. This is the hemoglobin I mentioned. If I fetch PDB. I've got what looks like two chains. If we color it by chain, we've got two chains, and I color by heteroatoms. I do see, I do see actual, actual heme here, another heme, heme there. But this is not <clears throat> not a biological subunit. The hemoglobin is, is is a tetramer, not not two two chains. So if I if I close this session and then open the same file as a bio unit, then I'm gonna get one HHO. I fetch it, and now we've got the tetramer when we color it by chain. We've got clearly four. Uh, four chains forming forming a tetramer. This is functional unit, biological unit. Uni. This is how molecule looks like in a, in a real life. The dimers is artifact of of the experimental method. And if we if we we can we can check the the sequence. We can look go under tools and sequence and show sequence viewer. We can show we do have two two copies of two copies of the record two copies of the PDB file present so we've got two listed here so each one has uh, its own 
own combination of sequences, but each one each one has two different sequences. So we can choose if we want to see an A chain from and its copy or B chain and its copy. When we pick up A, now we do have now we do have the sequence of the of the two A chains are two identical chains, each from a, from a separate copy that, that we're looking looking at here, and then we can select either either A chain here. So this is our A chain, or we've got the other copy of, of the same chain. So this is AA, that's how Chimera named it. So this is the, the other one. So those two, two chains are of the type A. And then we do have we do have two other two more chains they are of different sequence we can we can go and uh, go to tool sequence and show sequence viewer now for chain B we show now we can have also also chain chain B here and then one is called B the other one the other copy is called B A so we've got those those things those things uh, visible in the screen now when we we can don't want selections we can clear selection here and we can decide if we want to show side chains for example hide hide our cartoon show show heteratons and uh, when we're working with with the with with, with the images and then and showing demonstrating things i mean it, it's hard to reconstruct what we did before so it's useful to save the state of of what we've got at the given time given uh, at the given time so then we can go to file we can save and now there's quite a few options we can generate just the static image if we uh, pick up one of the image formats Either, either TIFF or JPEG or PNG. This is going to be a static image, uh, just an illustration type. If we want to save the state of the uh, of what we of, of our work, the so-called session, then we can go to session somewhere here. There should be there should be somewhere here session. Okay, and then this is my session, let's say one, we can save it. Okay, and then, then if we now close our session, I can go to file and pick up the file here, wherever I put it on the, on the desktop, I think, yeah, here. So we can open it from here and and recover where we left, or if or the file the session file can be sent somewhere, moved to a different different computer and, and read back into Chimera. If you're on the same on the same uh, PC, then you're gonna see whatever we were before. So we can just reload this thing directly from the from whatever was last last remembered so so that's those are the basics of, of of playing with chimera i maybe i'll show you i'll show you a couple of more more uh, show you the last thing which is way way more complicated so let's close this thing and here's one more one more file to look at Let's fetch by ID once more by a unit, and this is gonna be right A R E. No, this is gonna be let's say 
here's another here. Here the molecule was shown by default in a, in a different representation. Here we do see actual, uh, we see a space filling model. Looking at the models before you thought the protein is empty. There's mostly empty space with those tiny, tiny sticks around. Actually protein is pretty well packed. There's not much space left between the atoms. And this is, uh, this is a rendering that shows you the actual size of the size of the atoms so so you can get an idea how 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 packed those things are but we can always revert to we can turn off the the side chain so we can hide the side chains go back go back to showing cartoon representation and here's here's the protein it seems to be colored by by chain so you can, or, or by chain time, but we can always, always change the coloring if we, if we wish. We can color it by chain, whatever the camera thinks it should be. So here's, uh, here's rendition using different colors. And you can see how many, how many protein uh, chains is there. There's, there's quite a few of those and the protein is, is uh, ATP synthase. So this is an enzyme that, that, that converts the, the, the proton gradient across the membrane uh, into energy, uh, energy uh, of ATP. And the part at the bottom is actually embedded in the membrane. So, so this is where, where protons are going somewhere, somewhere through here between uh, what you can call a rotor. It's there is a this is arrangement of, of identical chains forming a forming a ring embedded in the membrane. And in between this ring and the and the part here, protons flow, they make the make the this this ring of, of alpha helices rotate. This thing in turn moves the, the protein chain somewhere here. They poke the, the catalytic subunits here and, and they bind ATP and ADP and then make, make the, the current bond and then release the, release the product. So that's, that's how, the, how the protein works. And uh, there's probably close to two dozen of, of different chains here. We can see all the chains in the molecule by looking at the panel here. Here we've got, no, we don't see individual chains sadly, but we do have a list here in a log file. See, we've got a list of all the, all the chains. So uh, this protein is pretty complicated, and this is not the crystal structure. This is this is determined by cryo cryo EM for a change. Protein has a has a connection to UCLA. Paul Boyer worked in this building actually determined what the mechanism of this enzyme, how how this thing catalyzes the reaction, and then after that the structure came out initially only of this part. Which, which confirmed the model and got, got both the crystallographer who got the structure and both Paul Boyer Nobel Prize. And that's that's connection to, to UCLA. And that's, uh, that was a brief overview of, 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 of protein structures of various sorts. We'll make a break now and then finish up in five minutes going over what's, what, what was repeating in, in, in those structures, what, 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 uh, what, what, how, how, how to classify, classify those things. So let's, let's pause for a moment. And, uh, Will and if you've got sequences for predictions, yeah. So then, if, if you've got sequences for prediction, get get to me and 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 and, 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 and we look into this thing. Okay, let's let's finish this thing up. So so uh, we went through a couple of, of, of three or four structures of of, of proteins, and uh, those those were all different proteins, but they do have similar uh, similar features. First, I mean, they are all structures that are 
essentially linear chains of amino acids. The backbone is always the same between, uh, between the proteins. It's always, always the same, uh, same pattern of uh, same pattern of of atoms going along the uh, along the chain, uh, and each uh, here, and each each monomer, each subunit is essentially uh, built on of of on 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 the same on the same uh, pattern. Uh, I think. Okay. There's always a, there's always a, a carboxyl group on one side. There's a amine group. There's a carbon chain connecting those two, and there's a side chain that varies. The pattern here is repeated all the time. The side chain changes, and there is a there is a common set of 20 different uh, side chains that uh, that I present that are are, are, are observed are, are encountered in protein molecules most of them are uh, hydrophobic are composed of, of carbon atoms or mostly carbon atoms with uh, no ability to to form hydrogen bonds or, or, or polar interactions or charge uh, interactions with uh, with with, with, with other molecules or atoms, uh, they vary by size. The smallest one is alanine, and then they are progressively bigger and bigger. So those are uh, those are residues that are hydrophobic. You might see residues that are charged. They can be either uh, positive or negative. The positive or basic residues are arginine, uh, histidine, and lysine. They they do have a charged groups in, 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 in normal pH that are positive. And then you've got two acidic residues, uh, aspartic acid and, and glutamic acid that are uh, that vary by, by size, but otherwise they've got both carboxyl group that's uh, that's negatively charged in, in, in as well as pH. And then there are uh, there are uh, side chains that are polar but not charged. Those are side chains with with the uh, OH group. It could be either serine with with uh, just OH group and single uh, single carbon here, or it might be thrown in with extra methylene group. And then uh, then you've got uh, asparagine and glutamine, which are amides of, 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 of those two, two residues. So those four residues are not charged, but they do have uh, polar atoms, oxygens, uh, that, that can form hydrogen bonds with, 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 with uh, the partners. And then there are a uh, few special cases. There's a, there's, there are, there's a uh, serine with the, with the SH group, that's that's uh, chemically very different from everything everything else. So so SH groups are are participating in, in different types of reactions, including dimerization. They they might fall, might form bridges between two system residues. When when you uh, when you oxidize systems, they they tend to form SH bonds. You might have. You do have a glycine which does not have a side chain. So so instead of uh, the something here you've got just hydrogen atom and you do have a proline where the side chain bends on its on itself and, and forms a ring that's part of a of a main chain so so this is this is this is also special case in all the cases other than glycine the carbon here is asymmetric it's got four different substituents so if you've got a, a molecule and mirror image uh, uh, they will they will look different, and all the all the amino acids in in nature are of the L type of of the stereochemistry that you see here. So so that's uh, that's because the, the carbon here does have four different different uh, different atoms surrounding surrounding it because of. Uh, 
the variety of the of the side chains proteins are much more diverse than the nucleic acids. In nucleic acids, when you look at what's there, there's there are only four different bases, and they are very similar in shape and and and, and size. So so the repertoire of shapes that that you see for for nucleic acids is much much smaller. That's that's typical typically what you see when when you've got two base pairs interacting in DNA. You've got either TAs or, or CG pairs. That's how it looks like. And, and this ends up with, with, with uh, forming double helix in case of DNA or maybe some sort of herpes in, in RNA, but that's, that's a way, way, way less diversity than you can see in, in case of proteins. The varying chain in proteins is our side chains. The common theme is, 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 is the polypeptide chain we go, we, we Make 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 connections between one residue here and the one that's preceding it, one that's following it here. That's that's a peptide bond. This is uh, created by condensation of carboxyl group and, and amino group. You eliminate water and form a bond that happens to be planar. This is because the bond here it's partially uh, of double bond character. So so this set of atoms forms a plane, but there are two bonds that can rotate. Uh, this allows a chain which is stretched here to bend in different ways and fold into, into, into globular structure. Not all the combinations, not all the combinations of, of rotations along the chain are allowed. In some cases, you're gonna start atoms hitting each other, like like it's shown in cartoon here. So there are some some or some combinations of the of the uh, phi and psi angles that are not allowed. This can be drawn on a plot called the Chandran plot, and if you start drawing either regions that are theoretically not not allowed, you just move the you, you arrange the atoms in the molecule and calculate when when uh, some atoms collide with each other and, and then you exclude this thing from from the plot. You can identify regions which are allowed uh, on a spherical basis, or you can just take a bunch of proteins, uh, record the phi psi angle for each each residue, and then plot it. You're gonna see that there are regions on a on a plot which shows. Along one axis, the, the phi angle, and the other right, psi angle, and then the regions here and here that, that most of the residues in proteins will, will end up it end up in. One of the it's this is the plot for all the residues other than glycine. If you look at glycines, there's additional. Uh, additional regions allowed. This is because glycine doesn't have a side chain. So a lot of restriction comes from just the, the first carbon on the side chain colliding with, with, with something something around it. With glycine, there's a hydrogen which is smaller, so, so there's more, more of the combinations allowed and there's extra the region allowed for glycines, but nonetheless, there are restrictions. And if we look, if we look at the regions that are most common, then uh, the one here corresponds actually what you've seen as an alpha helix. This is a series, it's formed by a series of residues that, that uh, with phi psi angles falling somewhere, somewhere around here. Okay. Uh, the structure that you see is, is stabilized by hydrogen, hydrogen bonds. There's a bunch of interactions between nitrogen of a main chain and carbonyl oxygen few residues away. So there's an entire series of those hydrogen bonds from there. And that's that's uh, that's what stabilizes typically the, the alpha helices. So so you end up with a with a nice, 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 nice structure like here. Uh, what are those hydrogen bonds? Well, uh, water atoms uh, using water atoms as a uh, water water molecules as a, as a starting starting point. Uh, water is formed by by oxygen shown here, two hydrogen atoms shown here. But apart from that, there are two additional uh, electron pairs uh, in a in a uh, 
corners of, of, of uh, tetragon that, that, that the molecules look like or here is drawn as a as in the in the, in the vertices of a cube and then uh, the bond between oxygen and hydrogen is polarized the hydrogen side is, is 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 a little bit positive the oxygen is 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 uh, with a negative charge, with a partial negative charge, the unpaired electrons forming those two pairs are even more negative. So then, then if you if you got more than one motor motor molecule, then it will start to arrange and form so-called hydrogen bonds. So this is interaction between uh, two molecules or two parts of a molecule uh, mediated by hydrogen. The hydrogen's got a positive charge, and then you've got the negatively charged part of the water molecule. This is one of those uh, electron pairs that are negatively charged. And, and this thing this thing makes makes two water molecules to stick to each other. And this is uh, that's what's happening in, in water and water solution. You're getting those molecules connecting, connecting with each other, interacting with each other through hydrogen bonds. And that's how and water has got uh, most of its its properties that are used to that the high high boiling point and 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 and, 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 and the ice structure that it's uh, of lower density than than the structure of the water. But uh, you can imagine that the combination of let's say oxygen, hydrogen, oxygen can come uh, from different molecules, or instead of oxygen, you can have another another uh, atom that's in, uh, another atom that that attracts uh, attracts the electron and it creates a uh, creates a uh, creates a uh, polarized bond here we've got the nitrogen on a, on a protein chain uh, hydrogen that's part of the of the peptide bond and then on the other side we've got oxygen from the carbonyl group on a main chain uh, atom, and uh, this is a hydrogen bond that that is formed uh, within alpha helices or other other uh, structural elements of the of, of the proteins. Those are those are uh, hydrogen bonds formed by a hydrogen atom coming from a uh, coming from a uh, an H group in a, in a main chain forming a interacting with the carbon is here and that's 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 what uh, that's what those hydrogen bonds are they can be formed either either as we've got here this one is formed by a by a carbonyl on the main chain and the and the uh, nitrogen and hydrogen in between uh, uh, of the main chain but you can have situation like here where you've got the nitrogen of the lysine, this seems to be like like a lysine group. It's got the uh, it's got the nitrogen with with three uh, hydrogens uh, bound to it because this is this is positively charged version of the of the amine group, and then uh, there's gonna be hydrogen here uh, forming forming hydrogen bond with 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 the carbon in, uh, one of the carbonates in a uh, in aspartate uh, group. So so uh, those are those are bonds that stabilize. As you've seen, as 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 it's shown here, here in alpha helices, uh, and that's that's why 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 you do see a lot of alpha helices in a, in, a, in the proteins. That's that's one of the structures that's 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 stabilizing that's stabilized by by hydrogen bonds that are present in, in every protein. Those are those are hydrogen bonds that that can be formed by the main chain uh, atoms, main chain, uh, yeah. Now, another another thing when looking at the at the alpha helices worth noticing is that here's a view along the one of the alpha helices in a, in a tin barrel. I try picked up alpha helices from a tin barrel, so you see the, the the ribbon going down down the screen, and you can possibly notice that. There's one phase of the helix that's more, more 
greasy, more hydrophobic than the other. You will look here, the residues on this side are mostly hydrophobic. This is, this is a, this is a good isoleucin, I think. This is valine, probably. There's a, there's a tryptophan, I mean, tyrosine here. It's also mostly a hydrophobic residue. So we've got the phase of a helix that's, that's pretty, pretty hydrophobic. This is what's pointing towards the inside of the protein structure versus the other side with, with either polar or even charged groups that are pointing outside. Here's the amine group of a, of a lysine group. Here's a, here's an aspartate. This is, this is uh, asparagine, I think. This is carboxyl. This is amide, amide group here. So, so this side is more, more polar. This one is more hydrophobic and that makes it stick to the outside of the protein inside of the protein is, tends to be hydrophobic outside is is more polar the form so that's the, the hydrophobic non-polar side this is the, the side that's more polar uh, the name used for those things is, is often encountered so-called amphibatic helix, which, which has both, both polar and polar side. If you look along the sequence of the helix, you're going to see that, that uh, you're going to get a repeating pattern of, uh, of hydrophobic and hydrophilic residues with periodicity corresponding to one turn of the helix, which is three, uh, which is four, four, seven, I think, the residues. So if you see a stretch of residues with a, with a pattern where you've got a couple of hydrophobics, then, uh, then charge, then hydrophobic, uh, then charge, charge, or something like that, then it might, it might correspond to, to helices uh, structure and this is one way of, of guessing what the structure of the protein might be by looking at those patterns of, of, of residue types along the along the chain. Those, those are alpha helices with uh, we do have also the other type of a of a of a common structure so-called beta sheets. We've seen those things also as well marked as, as ribbons. Here you do have chains pointing in the same direction each and here has an arrow, which means this is this is a C-terminal end of a helix. Here we've got N-terminal ends. This structure as alpha helices is uh, also stabilized by hydrogen, hydrogen bonds, but this time they go from one strand to another. In alpha helix, we had a very local interactions every four so residues. There was a hydrogen bond holding one turn of, of helix together. Here we've got two strands and hydrogen bond stabilized interactions between, between the chains. This is, uh, if that's, so, and then, then we do have, we do have, we do have in this case, one, two, three strands uh, forming, forming the entire sheet of, sheet of, 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 of alpha, of, 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 of strands. The, but here's a pattern of hydrogen bonds. The chains are pointing the same direction. So this is N terminus, this is C terminus. You can see there are, there are hydrogen bonds connecting every 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 pair of, of residues. So so that's 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 what's corresponding to here. There's also it is also possible that you've got chains that are going in opposite directions, the hydrogen bonding. Can also cause can also be formed. Hydrogen bonds can be also formed in, in this arrangement. And this type of this type of uh, this type this type of, of beta sheets, so-called anti-parallel beta sheets, are also uh, encountered in a, in, a, in a proteins. Here's a here's an extreme case. This is a protein called porin, which, you know, as name implies, forms pores in the membranes. It's formed practically. Of, 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 of one, one, uh, one big beta sheet that turns on each other. The protein is made out of three monomers. So we've got one, two, three chains. Each one is a, is a uh, very, very large beta sheet that bends on its over and closes the ring. If you look from the side, this is the region that's embedded in the membrane. And if you look at 
at the residues on the outside, this is the region corresponding to what you see in the yellow here. On the outside, you see all the, all the residues that are hydrophobic. You have valine here, another valine with a phenylalanine here, tryptophan and so forth. So this site that's in contact with the, with the lipids is hydrophobic. Whatever is inside lining the, the channel is gonna be more polar. So here you're gonna have a pattern of uh, residues that are going to be hydrophobic, hydrophilic, hydrophobic, hydrophilic, hydrophobic, hydrophilic. It's periodicity is gonna be uh, just one, one hydrophobic, one hydrophilic. This corresponds to uh, side chains in a, in a, in a beta sheet uh, pointing either out in at one position and then down uh, up in, in in the other in, in beta sheet every other residue points either up or down so so uh, this uh, this this is reflected in a, in a pattern of how uh, how the residues how the residue properties are, are changing if you got alpha helix that that's on the border of, of hydrophobic and hydrophilic environment the residues will change change the properties every other residue is gonna change change the property so so that's that's the case of anti-parallel beta sheets. And then, uh, then in reality, you're gonna see the mix. This is this is the case where where you've got a lot of a lot of protein uh, protein chains. Some of them are alpha helical. Some of them are are forming beta sheets. And then uh, then if you plot the uh, each residue on a random plot where they are, you're going to see that the vast majority of the of, of the residues will end up in the regions that are allowed. Those are the the mark in blue, and then some of them are going to be outside in the, in the regions where, where they shouldn't be. Okay, the things marked in triangles are glycines, which which are allowed in the, in extra regions. So so most of the glycines end up end up. Uh, and here at least a lot of them end up in there and they are property fine. Uh, this is one of the way of evaluating the, the quality of the protein structure. If you if someone gives you a protein structure, you can you can uh, generate a Ramachandran plot and then then evaluate if the residues are showing up in a in a disallowed region. There's probably some some problems with the with the, with, the, with the quality of the structure because the residues physically shouldn't be there because it's, it's, it's not, not 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 possible it's just just model that's 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 creating errors now so so far we had we had the protein sequence the the order of residues along the chain and we've got 20 different residues that make different combinations for different proteins. Now, some of the regions of the proteins form either alpha helices or beta sheets or, or something 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 else. And then we can combine those uh, those different uh, secondary structure elements, alpha uh, helices and beta sheets into, into bigger, uh, bigger entities. And uh, after looking through many of those uh, people came up with with way of classifying different protein shapes uh, into different categories. It's, it's either protein shape or protein fold, that's, that's, that's the name. And typically the initial, uh, initial classification divides proteins based on the uh, presence of uh, alpha or beta sheets. So you've got three, three uh, three classes, either proteins that are mostly alpha or proteins that are mostly beta sheets or, or a mix. And then for each of those things, there are subcategories, which first look at how different secondary structural elements are arranged in a, a three-dimensional space. So here's here's our Tim Barrel, where we do have a, where we do have a, in the center, eight beta, beta strands forming a, like, like a beta barrel, but very, very small inside. And then there are eight alpha helices surrounding it around. Then here's another type of fold where you've got the beta sheet in between and, and the alpha helices lining it, 
on, on both sides. And here's another case. This is more like ribonuclease we've seen where we had a, a large beta sheet and one or two alpha helices. So, so this is if this is architecture, this is how the secondary are uh, secondary structure elements are arranged in a space. And then uh, irrespective of how they're arranged in space, you can make connections in different ways. So then then each of those arrangements can be split into different different topologies and into different ways that the, the, the secondary structure elements are, are connected. And that's that's one of the way of classifying or describing uh, protein protein structures and in, in three dimensions. This is what CAF database is using to, to classify uh, classify uh, protein structures. And they also provide services where you can submit your structure and then CAF is gonna try to find out which of the proteins is which of the folds your, your protein belongs to. So so that's helpful if you you got a new protein want to see something something learn something about it what you, you compare it to non proteins and then and then if there are similar proteins your protein might behave in a similar similar way or, or may have similar properties now if we go beyond single chain this is done on the, at the level of a single chain we might have more than one chain come together and we've seen a just moment before a porin that's that's the protein that's formed by three identical chains, but they fall from trimers. And this arrangement of, of, of uh, more than one chain is, 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 is called the quaternary structure. This is, this is how, how uh, more than one chain comes together. And, and they are pretty diverse. In this case, it's, it's identical, uh, identical copies uh, forming a trimer. Uh, here, here's a case of Rubisco. This is the enzyme that has, that 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 that's uh, responsible for, uh, for assimilation for for uh, building carbon into into organic matter, and this is formed by two different type of chains. The pink chains are of one uh, type, and then the green and light green chains are of the other type. There are overall there's eight green chains and eight eight pink chains. The other set of small chains are behind the behind the are underneath so you, you don't see it. So so here's another case of a very very large complex but but formed by by a repeated repeated uh, subunits, eight of one type and eight of the other type. In case of hemoglobin, and I think this is hemoglobin we've seen before, those are four chains, but of two types only. And here's another another case of, 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 of quaternary structure. And then we've got uh, things that are very complex because they are made of, out of very diverse chains form, forming very asymmetric uh, machine type of, of thing that's 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 uh, bit like this this so that it can it can uh, pump protons and then generate ATP so that's that's another example of quaternary quaternary structure and and uh, the way those things are uh, built is 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 required by the function in case of in case of hemoglobin, you need four four subunits and uh, four binding sites for oxygen, so that the binding of oxygen can be cooperative and 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 uh, hemoglobin can 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 act as efficiently as a transporter of the oxygen uh, from the from the from the lungs to, to to the tissue. So, so in many of those cases, the structure is is reflecting the function. So if you know how the proteins are are built. What's the shape? What's the of the structure? You can infer something about the structure. You can infer what's happening. What's going to happen if certain residue is modified? So, so that's that's why why bother with the with the, with the, with the, with, the, with the looking at the protein protein structure. So, so that's that's about it for today. I do have. I think the slides do have a list of the of the few structures. Uh, Somewhere there, I mean, there are sensibly examples of, of, of proteins to to look at, 
it's the only way to uh, start using Chimera and start look, looking at the structures is actually practice. So, so it's it helps to to open open a PDB file, see see what's there, move molecule around. The uh, PDB one hundred one is a good good resource on RC RCSB side. It provides vignettes, interesting stories about different different. Uh, Different proteins, and then, then, then you can always uh, read one of the proteins they refer to. They provide you with PDB code. You can read read the file into Chimera, move the molecule around, see if you can find the the the, the, the residues or, or or parts of the molecule that they refer to in the, in the write up. So so anything that 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 helps you to play with Chimera is is is, is helpful, and this is the only way to only way only way to 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 work to to learn how to use it and uh, it also helps either when 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 hearing some stories in, in a class about whatever protein or or reading a paper referring to structures it's it's a different story reading looking at the at the, at the figure in a in a book then then just loading the file and then if you can move the molecule around and then and, and zoom in zoom out it's it it, it 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 helps to see what's what what the paper is about so so camera is, is useful useful as, as a tool when, when when just reading anything about 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 the molecular biology and so when whether there is any structural element just 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 try to play with camera it's free and and try to use it okay so that's about it we're gonna Stop sharing. We're gonna stop recording.